All right guys, today I wanted to talk about what I look for in a laptop worthy of a review on the channel. Why I've chosen to review some, but not other laptops and give you my thoughts on the most popular laptops that I haven't reviewed, including the Asus G14, the new HP Envy, both AMD and Intel, the Asus Zephyrus Duo and the Pro Duo, the IdaPad Flex 14 AMD, the Spectre 13 and the Electronics Mag. Let's start off with how I select laptops to review. I don't have a ton of time, which means I need to be super picky when it comes to what laptops I choose to review. In case you don't know, I work in software tech full time and do YouTube on the side. I have always been super passionate and fanatical about finding the very best technology. So when it comes to YouTube, I just want to share what I've discovered and help as many people as I can. With that in mind, I aim to do about one video per week. However, I don't want all the videos to be laptop reviews. I want to produce a range of content covering other tech topics that I hope will help you make more informed purchasing decisions. For example, my i5 vs i7 video or the MacBook Pro Silver vs Space Gray video. You get the point. I have limited time and a limited number of laptops that I can review. So I have to be super selective which ones I choose. This makes me a lot like you as I spend a lot of time thinking through and researching which ones I should buy. I tend to choose laptops to review that I believe have the potential to be the best for the money for a particular type of user. For example, the IdeaPad 5 15 with AMD, which when it came out was revolutionary for the budget shopper. Or the new Dell XPS range with their gorgeous edge to edge displays that I felt could maximize productivity for many people. In my selection process, I always try to find laptops that get the basics right. Very comfortable to use because they are lightweight, don't get overly warm to the touch and don't have loud and noisy fans. Plus they have to have a good keyboard, excellent trackpad, color accurate screen, bright enough to use indoors comfortably, no niggling issues like coil wine, etc, etc. And preferably an AMD processor as I just feel Intel's 10th gen aren't competitive right now. Neither Ice Lake nor Comet Lake. They perform worse than AMD, draw more power and generate more heat. After taking all of this into account, I then factor in how many other laptop reviewers have already covered the laptop. If I feel that a ton of YouTubers have reviewed it and I likely won't have anything valuable to add, then I deprioritize reviewing that laptop. So here is what I think of the popular laptops I chose to skip. I'm lucky enough that I still live in a place where I can actually go and try laptops in stores. So that's what we're going to do. But of course I'm going to play it very safe. I've got my mask on. I'm going to use hand sanitizer before and afterwards. Well, let's go take a look at some laptops. So here's the famous Asus G14. Obviously I have used it many times guys and I do like this model, especially the lower end one that Best Buy sells. It does come with only one eight gig stick of RAM. So you'll want to upgrade this, but nonetheless, I think this is a good price point. I kind of like it better than the other machine, which is very hard to see the keys on. I think it has an excellent trackpad, keyboard, and obviously very powerful components in a small portable chassis. I also feel that the lighter colored version with the 120 Hertz panel doesn't have the best fast refresh rate screen. Plus, the laptop's fans can get quite noisy. I could clearly hear them in Best Buy, which is a loud environment. Overall, it's an odd laptop though in terms of who it best serves. I personally prefer gaming off a 17 inch laptop as I find the experience more immersive, minimum a 15 inch screen. I personally would get the new 15 inch HP Omen if you are a gamer over that laptop. It's got a bigger screen and a better fast refresh rate panel. For photo or video editors, the G14 just doesn't have the right screens for that. For software developers, I'd probably look towards the new T14S, the ThinkPad, or the MacBook Pro 13 10th gen over the G14. Everyday casual users, I'd recommend an X1 Carbon, Spectre 13 OLED, or an entry level MacBook Pro, as these are more polished and premium devices than the G14 for those kind of users. That being said, I can see for some people the G14 may be the right choice and I respect you for that. For example, you want a single laptop that is very powerful so that at home you can plug it into an external monitor for gaming or video editing and then use the same laptop on the go. Plus, honestly, there were so many reviews of this laptop, I didn't know what else I could add, but now you know my thoughts on it. The Asus Pro Duo and the Zephyrus Duo. Use the Duo many times. I don't like laptops where the keyboards are pushed forward. I find this impossible to use comfortably in many situations, such as on your lap or on a tray table on a plane. I would only consider this design if the laptop was in a 17 inch form factor and therefore more of a desktop replacement. That way you'd have plenty of room to put your hands. I do like the concept though. More screen real estate is always a good thing. Also, the original Pro Duo had two different types of displays, one OLED and one matte IPS. I found this rather jarring when switching your eyes from one screen to the other. 
The new HP Envys, I've used all the Best Buy models and straight away can see that the base screens are pretty bad color wise. In terms of buying the 15 inch model with AMD, I personally don't like the look of the darker color and you can't upgrade it to have decent dedicated graphics. I really like the silver one. Um, I like it better than the black color in the AMD. Now, you know, obviously again, I have used it. If I had to choose a model of the silver one, I would go for the one with the six core processor and the dedicated graphics. I think that's a really nice one, but of course it's Intel. It kind of sucks that I can't get the AMD one in the nice silver color with the dedicated graphics. Plus, both the Intel and AMD models are rather heavy at 4.7 pounds. It also becomes quite expensive once you spec it up. I have had this laptop in my cart for ages, but can't see why I would buy it over the MacBook Pro 16, which is lighter, or the new HP Omen 15 with AMD. So even after looking at your responses to the survey I posted on YouTube, I ended up buying the HP Omen 15 instead. It costs less for better components, has a bright screen with excellent colors, runs very quiet, and combines a powerful AMD processor with a great dedicated graphics card. The IdeaPad Flex 14 with AMD. Read the early reviews and the screen is below 300 nits of brightness, which means there is no way I would personally recommend it. The HP Spectre X360 13 used it many times and love it, especially the OLED model. I am aware that it doesn't perform that well trying to keep thermals in check, but for an everyday casual user browsing the web, I feel this is still a very good choice. Best Buy only sells the 16 gig of RAM model in the brown color though, which I don't like. So I ordered it custom from HP, silver, OLED, 16 gig of RAM, but unfortunately after two months of waiting, the laptop still hadn't shipped. So I canceled it and will reorder it when hopefully an Intel Tiger Lake version arrives, which I'm super excited about. The electronics mag, there were just so many reviews on this laptop that I felt I had missed the boat. Plus, when it came out, my YouTube channel was super small and I was still working on my process of how to make videos more efficiently. Back then, it took me around 20 hours per video or more. Anyway, I ordered the new electronics thin with AMD the moment it came out, so hopefully I can rectify myself here. Overall guys, the laptops right now that I'm excited for and will look to review are high-end laptops with AMD. Seriously, imagine a laptop with an AMD 4900H CPU and an RTX 2080 Super. Yes please. I'm also very excited for Intel Tiger Lake. I think that upcoming release is flying under the radar a bit. Ice Lake was disappointing, but I think the integrated graphics in Tiger Lake is very promising. I'm so-so in terms of excitement about Apple ARM MacBooks. The Microsoft Pro X, a Windows ARM laptop, is a gorgeous device, but it's rough in terms of using non-native apps. I get what Apple are doing and agree with the strategy, but I feel it's going to be a couple of years before these are ready for prime time for power users. That being said, I certainly am being very open-minded to them. Honestly, I'm more excited to hopefully see a MacBook Pro 16 with an AMD Ryzen 4900H. Well, I hope this video shows that I am listening to you guys, whether here on YouTube or on the Discord server. When you guys say you really want my thoughts on certain laptops, I do head out to try them, research them, and today I have given you my thoughts on them. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. And if you wanna show some extra support for the channel and the hard work that of course goes into it, I'll post the link to become a patron supporter in the description below. Until next time, I will catch you later.